Hey chess lovers and friends, welcome back to Casper Chess. Today I've put together a special collection of my favorite King's Gambit videos for you. I noticed that many of you might have missed some of these amazing gems, so I have organized them all in one place for easy access. Stay tuned and enjoy. I'm going to try and convince you guys that the King's Gambit is not a boring gambit. Okay, so trap number one, after we start with pawn to e4, the black responds with e5. Instead of playing knight to f3 right away, the king's gambit is where we play an immediate pawn to a4. Now black can either accept it by taking on f4 or just decline it by playing other non-committal moves. For example, pawn to d6 or knight c6. After playing pawn to f4, the most common move as you can see in the leeches database is it takes f4. And hey, the main move here is knight to f3, stopping queen h4 check by black. But before I show you this, I want you to try out bishop c4, a very sneaky move which allows queen h4 check because now we are going to put our king on the most secured square which is f1 so king f1 and again i don't want to waste your time you guys it's only the top played moves that i'm showing you today bishop c5 as you can see is what everybody plays wanting to mate on f2 but this turns out to be a mistake because we have pawn to d4 and after bishop b6 which everyone plays now this is when you go knight to f3 and Believe you me guys, stockfish favors white even in this position where our king is on f1. So king f1 is not much of a stretch. Anyways, knight to f3 attacks the black queen on h4. So black has to make a decision. Well, queen e7 is the most played move according to the leeches database. But let's look at the second most played move, queen f6, which is what some unprepared opponents play. Well, you simply go knight c3, no more development. You want to go knight d5 next, right? So that's why you are going to see black stopping your knight d5 upcoming possibility with a move pawn to c6. Position is already plus 2.7 in favor of white. You simply go pawn to e5, attacking the queen one more time. And once again, you can see queen f5 is by far the top played move. After which you simply go bishop d3. You keep on attacking the queen. Anyways, what do we see here? Queen g4. And now you go knight e4. Can you see these squares that black just created? Yeah, and that's why you're going to see most of your opponents playing bishop c7. And so this is when you play pawn to h3, attacking the queen one more time. And once again, as you can see, they mostly play queen h5. After which you gladly take the f4 pawn. Knight e7 by black, preparing to castle short. Or you can simply go pawn to g4, attacking the black queen once again. You don't even have to memorize moves here. You just need to recall one of the opening principles that says, do not develop your queen very early in the opening stage. And that's what black did. So after queen g6 by black, you now play knight d6 check which also happens to be a discovery on the black queen. So that's one little trap to master in this line. So it all started with our dubious bishop move to c4, allowing black to give us a check and making us lose our right to castle in order for us to start developing all our pieces with tempo. Now I told you that after knight to f3, the top played move by black is queen e7, as you can see in the master's database, because of course queen g4 here doesn't work due to this little trap, you guys, bishop takes f7, and after king takes, then you simply go knight e5 check, which will also win the black queen on g4. And even if uh, the black king doesn't take our free bishop, and let's say they play something like king f8 here, this is only good for white, you guys, as now we can just play pawn to h3. I mean, since the queen is already out, so we just keep on chasing this queen. And let's say after king takes f7 this time, now we can try to trap black's queen, which is on g3. So they have to play queen g6, after which we go knight e5, once again, four king, the king and the queen. So that's why after knight to f3, queen e7 is the top played move according to the leeches database but let me show you what to do against this before we move on to another interesting trap so even after queen e7 the best way to gain initiative is to begin with knight to c3 which also defends your pawn on e4 because the queen was attacking it right and again knight to f6 is by far the top played move as you can see which calls for pawn to e5 so the knight has to go back and then we continue with knight d5 attacking the queen once again and see the beauty about this gambit you guys very easy to play queen d8 you simply take that pawn and after pawn to c6 attacking your knight on d5 you just play bishop g5 attacking black's queen and it's nearly trapped the only move is pawn to f6 which saves the queen uh, somehow but you have e takes f6 and black should better take this pawn because if they take your knight now you are going to promote into another queen after f takes g7 and let's say queen c7 you first of all go queen e2 check because there is mate in 5 here if i'm not mistaken 
queen f7, you take on g8 and promote into a queen. And from here, you should be able to win the game smoothly, which is why black needs to take on f7 instead of taking on d5. So you will see them playing g takes f6 anyways. After which, I still recommend you go queen e2 check. You see them play king f8 here. You go knight takes f6, don't worry. Because after they take on f6, now there's a mate in one. Our queen is covering this file and our light squared bishop is covering this diagonal. I mean, even if they play something else like queen e7, calling for a queen exchange, well, I just recommend you go queen takes e7. There's a mate in seven here after rook e1. And that's check, king d8. And now there's a mate in three that I would love you guys to find in this position using your own eyeballs not stockfish leave your comments in the comment section down below i want to learn of your existence as well and i'm going to mention your names in my future videos probably my next one before we move on to another trap you guys what if after knight to f3 attacking the queen and then they play queen e7 the knight c3 and instead of knight to f6 what if black plays pawn to c6 stopping our knight to d5 well we just go on and take the pawn on f4 right and again if knight to f6 you already know our plan so this time black may play pawn to d6 after which i recommend to go queen d3 also paving way for the other rook to come into the game because you need more attackers on the middle of the board to come up front if you still want to continue attacking and so if knight to f6 once again you still go pawn to e5 d takes e5 d takes e5 and maybe they should play knight h5 here attacking the bishop at least but you still have bishop g5 attacking the queen and the best that black can do here is to call for a queen exchange after which you accept let them take you take back with a pawn and even if they castle go ahead and threaten the light squared bishop so that after taking the bishop you can play pawn to g4 trapping black's knight on h5 even if they play bishop g4 at least you can walk away with a major piece and it will be an exchange up with a superior position enough of this you guys let's move on to another interesting trap all right trap number two this is where you start with a4 e5 then you still go pawn to f4 and as always black takes now this time instead of playing bishop c4 which invites queen h4 check you can simply play the normal move here knight to f3 stopping queen h4 by black well after this the top played move as you can see you guys is pawn to g5 what do you do against this obviously you don't resign i recommend the move knight to c3 but first of all black simply wants to play pawn to g4 threatening to capture our knight and let's say if our knight moves away then they are going to play queen h4 check which will force our king to move and make our position worse but that's what we want so you simply play knight to c3 in this position and after pawn to g4 attacking your knight what well, you can go knight e5 double attacking this pawn right and also allowing black to play queen h4 check that's what they wanted and since you cannot block this check with your elbow i suggest you do it with your pawn and i believe this looks funny you guys but after f takes g3 and queen takes g4 stockfish says the game is very much equal the best that black can do in this position is just to exchange queens and accept the fact that we are ahead in development with our pieces you can see i mean it doesn't even matter even if they play g takes h2 we don't even have to win back this pawn we can play knight d5 wanting to take on c7 and that'll be check double attacking the king and the rook on a8 right hey, bishop d6 doesn't work because we have pawn to e5 and black will lose something in this position if black doesn't play bishop d6 and let's say they play king d8 the top plate move well you have this knight e5 and once again knight to h6 is by far the top played move but you can go d4 and after pawn to c6 you don't even have to take the knight first of all you can give a check and the best that black can do here is to donate his bishop otherwise king e8 runs into knight c7 checkmate and so after playing knight to f3 and black plays pawn to g5 then you go knight c3 pawn to g4 and knight e5 this time you might not see black accepting your queen exchange offer as you can see in the leeches database black players like to fancy a little bit with the move pawn to g2 discovery check and at the same time aiming to promote into a queen after g takes h1 well there's nothing much you can do just take on h4 and after g takes h1 black promotes into a queen what well, you simply play this sneaky move queen h5 intending to capture on f7 here there is no better way for black to defend the f7 pawn 
Yeah, the top played move according to the Liches database is knight to h6. But here you can just play pawn to d4 right away, threatening to remove the defender of the f7 square. And again, pawn to d6, you guys, you can see, is the top played move even in this position, attacking our knight. But we can just go ahead and take that other knight on h6. And after d takes e5, yes, queen takes e5 is a great move, but it just throws away the advantage back to black. A better move here, according to Stockfish, and according to my eyeballs, is bishop takes bishop. If king takes, you have queen h6 check, and a king has to move maybe to g8, after which you go king f2, taking away the only square where the black queen could have gone. And in the game that we are analyzing, black played bishop g4 here, intending to play queen f3 next. But hey, the simplest is to go queen g5 check and win that light squared bishop. But even better is bishop e2 just trying to exchange bishops and by the way attacking black queen on h1 with the rook on a1 let's say they take the rook you can simply go knight d5 and there's nothing much that black can do to stop this coming mate with either knight e7 checkmate or knight f6 checkmate the good part is that you don't have to memorize all these moves you'll be able to find these great combinations once black takes on h1 and promotes into a queen but hey after pawn to g2 by black Discovery check and then queen takes h4, g takes h1, and queen h5. There's one tricky move that I would love you guys to know. Instead of black defending his f pawn with knight to h6, you will see this sneaky move bishop e7. The idea by black is that if you take on f7, which is a blunder, now they can safely play king d8 and there is nothing that you can do from here black stack squared bishop is a great defender of the king not to mention that black queen is already safe and there's little that you can do here so after black plays bishop e7 in this position the best that i recommend is taking with the knight not the queen because now you have an opportunity to mate your opponent in a very funny way let's say after knight to f6 when they attack your queen on h5 up to you guys to find a very beautiful mate in three for white in this position leave your answers in the comment section down below and i'll be commenting throughout let's go okay so trap number three again you go pawn to e4 e5 by black pawn to f4 and it takes f4 once again i recommend you go knight to f3 because what else does black play here apart from pawn to g5 <laughs> so this time instead of playing knight to c3 well you can still go bishop c4 that's one thing that i like about the king's gambit you guys there are so many ways to kill a rat so g4 is what they're going to play anyways because they want to chase your knight away so that they can come with queen h4 check you already know the story but this time if you want you can just simply cast a shot completely sacrificing your knight on f3 and this is playable you guys even at super gm level if you think i'm joking you can see in the masters database you guys even the one and only ikaru nakamura played this against andre king in 2010 and won the game but you need to know what you're doing exactly which is why you need to pay attention to this video anyways so instead of checking back on f3 with your queen i suggest you play this sneaky move again you guys knight c3 giving black one more chance to take another pawn because what else and believe you me with all your eyeballs and your eyebrows f takes g2 is by far the top played move by black after which you shake your opponent's eyeballs with this unexpected move bishop takes f7 another sacrifice can you believe this guys this is so crazy because after king takes f7 that was check now you can save your rook with tempo by simply capturing on f4 and that's another check and let's say if the king goes back to e8 now you can simply play queen h5 check and mate black in two like this what a beautiful mate but it's not every time you're going to see your opponent going back to e8 after rook takes f4 they may play knight to f6 blocking the check because once again they cannot block the check with their toes and so you can now play e5 since the knight is pinned to the king and one interesting thing that you guys need to know is black spawn on g2 is our shield this is our defender so we don't even need to take it okay so bishop g7 is the top played move by black a nice try but we have queen h5 check and if they play something like king g8 which is the top played move again you now take that free knight and after bishop takes 
Knight d5 here, adding another attacker. And here there's nothing that black can do to save the game. If the bishop moves away, we have met on f7. This is a lost game. So once again, after you played knight to f3 and black plays g5, intending to go g4 next, instead of knight c3, remember you can still go bishop c4 because there are many ways to kill a rat allowing black to play g4 so that you can now castle short and obviously they are going to take on a3 after which you don't take back immediately but rather play knight c3 and yes in this position black can play bishop c5 check but that can be met with d4 immediately and remember this is where we covered the move f takes g2 where i recommended to sacrifice on f7 but hey you may see your opponent not just falling for whatever you want so the second most played move in this position is queen f6 as you can see in the legion database so queen f6 is what you will see on the board after which i recommend you go d4 giving black one more chance to take on g2 so that you can take on f4 with your rook and right here i don't believe in knight to c6 which is the second most played move because you have knight d5 and other interesting moves rook takes f3 and so the move that you're likely to see is bishop h6 in this position kind of a waiting move but you have rook takes f3 preparing to go knight d5 next and that's why you're going to see most of your opponents you can see in the latest database again they play pawn to c6 and so whenever you see pawn to c6 stopping knight d5 it's high time you go pawn to e5 attacking the queen and once again yes you can go bishop d3 if you want but i like this move queen f1 just lining up all my pieces along the f file in an effort to simplify the game even further i don't even know what the best move for black is in this position you guys trap number four now comes my favorite part where black chooses not to take your gambit let's say after pawn to a4 instead of taking on a4 black chooses to play something else like pawn to d6 or knight c6 a more principled move well i recommend you just simply continue with knight to f3 because even if black takes on f4 this time the simplest is to go d4 next and if black plays g5 holding on to the pawn what well, you have d5 attacking the knight on c6 and if knight b8 which is the top played move now you can go queen d4 or well, queen f6 is a nice try but there's pawn to e5 and after queen g7 you simply start bringing more pieces closer to where their attack is and don't be afraid about pawn to g5 because you have d6 attacking the queen if c takes d6 now you go knight d5 attacking the queen if queen is 6 you go knight c7 check plus attacking the queen on e6 and it doesn't even matter even if black plays queen d8 in this position you simply take on d6 and after bishop takes you take the free rook where white plays an in-between move queen a5 check the idea is that if you block with your bishop now they can win your knight but hey that's fine because you will still be able to win black's knight on g8 and after bishop f8 blocking the check now you castle long don't worry about losing your knight because you are threatening to mate on f8 with your queen after this move bishop b4. Not to mention that your rook is attacking the queen on d5. So black should resign in this position. And that's why after pawn to a4, if black does not accept your gambit and play something else, you simply develop knight to f3. But this time they may play pawn to d6 just trying to be solid. But hey, you just complete your normal development bishop c4 you guys. Planning to play pawn to d3 next and castle short now bishop g4 is what everybody plays once again well i recommend you just play pawn to h3 you begin chasing this light squad bishop and can you believe that the second most played move in this position is bishop h5 which is a blunder because that loses the bishop instantly you guys and so after bishop g4 and pawn to h3 black doesn't have to play bishop h5 here the best move is bishop takes f3 as you can see after which you just simply take back with your queen and after knight d4 this is what everybody plays you guys now you go queen d3 wait a second if you go back to babylon like what everybody does that will be losing because black will play queen h4 check and you won't have pawn to g3 that's why you need to keep an eye on this move queen h4 check and play queen d3 supporting pawn to g3 in case of queen h4 by black which is the top played move by the way after which you go pawn to g3 and black has to go back we have pawn to c3 and if knight to f3 check which is some 
kind of a blunder, I don't recommend going king f2. Just put your king on f1, that's better. Because this time after e takes a4, you can simply go g4 attacking black queen. So if queen c5, you simply go pawn to b4, you start gaining some tempo. And in a game that we are analyzing, black played queen c6, which allowed bishop b5 pin on the queen to the king and black resigned. Yes, it is time to play the king's gambit. Oh, I'm playing against a 1639 rated player. If pawn to e5, I'll go pawn to f4. Or should I switch to the bishop's opening, bishop c4? Now ah, let me just go pawn to f4, I think. Yep. So pawn to f4, the king's gambit. Okay, black takes. The idea is to go bishop c4. Yeah, knight to f3 is the main move here, but there's a line that I want to show you guys. While we play bishop c4 and then knight c3, yeah, g5 and queen h4 by black is the main idea. So that's why I'm considering to play bishop c4 first, followed by knight to f3 maybe. So with bishop c4, I'm allowing black to go queen h4 check because I'll be more than happy to lose my right to castle after queen h4 check and king f1. <laughs> so queen h4 check, king f1. So the king on f1 is the safest piece on earth right now. The next move is pawn to d4 and knight to f3. I anticipate bishop c5. Because that's what everybody plays. Yep, so bishop c5. <laughs> so black wants to mate me on f2, which doesn't work. I have d4. Threatening to take the dark squared bishop. Then after bishop b6, which everyone plays, I'm going to play knight to f3, attacking the queen on h4. So I covered all these stuffs, you guys, in my tutorial video, which has popped up in the card above, which was released, I think, two days ago. You need to watch that, you guys. So whatever I teach you, do actually work in real life, you guys. So bishop b6 now, knight to f3, attacking the queen. The queen should go back. I talked about this. They normally play queen e7, after which the move I recommended is knight c3 and knight d5. After knight c3, they, they like playing pawn to c6. Yeah? Yeah. So you see, black is doing exactly what I preached about in my tutorial video. So bishop takes a4 is the way to go. Sorry, knight to f6 is a blunder because I have pawn to e5 now. And if knight h5, I'll play bishop g5. This is what I covered. So they like playing knight h5. But I have bishop g5. So bishop g5, this is going to be so easy for me. Because I know what I'm doing. Pawn to f6. I think I never bothered to cover this move. Because it looks dubious. Should I take? Oh, if e takes f6. Black would take back on f6 with his knight. So, bishop h4 is the way to go. Pinning the f6 pawn to the queen. Okay, g5. Now, that's a very dubious move. I think I can just sacrifice my knight on g5. Since now I'm attacking the knight on h5. So, f takes g. Now queen takes h5. That'll be check. Yep. And if king d8, I have bishop takes g5, pinning the queen to the king. Oh, king f8. Now I think I can still take on g5 with my bishop. Yeah, I think bishop takes g5. Attacking the queen. And, and maybe if queen g7, I have bishop h6, pinning the queen to the king. So let's see what black is going to do. I think the game is over. It's just a matter of technique. The move to play here is bishop h6, but do I have a better move apart from that? I'm seeing something like king e2 and rook h f1. That'll be check. Maybe I have some mate somewhere, but let me just be simple. Bishop h6. Just pinning the queen to the king. Oh, <laughs> rook g8. I think now it is checkmate. Queen f7 checkmate calls black's queen is pinned to the king on f8. What a beautiful mate, you guys. 
So if you want to know more about this line, watch the video that is already in the cut above you guys. Don't miss my tutorial videos. I mean well to your souls and I'm sure my opponent lost because he didn't watch my tutorial video on the King's Gambit. Anyways, let me play another game without wasting much of your time. Oh, now I'm playing somebody rated 1849. Then let me go e4. If e5, I'll still go pawn to f4 the King's Gambit because that's what I'm demonstrating in today's video. So pawn to f4. So let him tick. They always do that. Now what am I going to play this time? Should I play knight f3? Or maybe bishop c4? After knight to f3, I anticipate pawn to g5. I think let me play knight f3 to satisfy your eyeballs. Instead of doing the same thing over and over. So pawn to g5. Now bishop c4 is the main move here. Allowing pawn to g4. With knight to f3, black doesn't have queen h4 this time. So bishop c4, if pawn to g4, I'll just castle short, sacrificing my knight. Oh, pawn to d6 by black, I didn't see that coming. So what am I going to do? I think let me just develop my queen's knight. Yeah, the plan is to go knight d5, maybe in the near future. Oh, pawn to c6. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Maybe I can go pawn to h4 now. I think pawn to h4 looks attractive because if g4, I'll play knight g5. So I think pawn to h4 makes a lot of sense before developing my d pawn. So if g4, again, I'll go. Oh, now this is very dubious once again. So this guy is an 1849 rated player and he decided to play pawn to f6, forgetting that maybe, just maybe, I can sacrifice my knight on g5. Yep. I think knight takes g5. If pawn takes, yeah, which they have done, now I can go queen h5 check. And I don't know what is going to happen here. I just want to put some pressure. This just looks too good. Yeah, I think there's no immediate way to checkmate black, but this just looks too good for me or for my position. Pawn to d4 next. The idea is to go e5 in the near future and maybe take the pawn on f4 like, yeah, bishop, bishop g7 by black. Let me just take the pawn on f4. And the plan is to castle long basically. So bishop takes f4. I want to castle long. Oh, so bishop takes d4. I think let me just castle long attacking the dark squad bishop. If bishop takes on c3, I'll take with, okay, black just took on c3. I think I can now take on d6 with my bishop, right? Not my rook. At least taking with my bishop creates more threats. Okay, now queen takes d6. That's a desperado move. I think even better is queen f7 check. Yep, black's queen is still pinned to the king. Okay, knight e7 invites queen e6 check. And now I'm going to win the free queen with tempo. So king c7 queen takes d6 check next i'm gonna take the dark squared bishop yep so king b6 now b takes c3 next i'll go king d2 and rook b1 check okay black plays knight g6 now what am i going to do i think uh king d2 next rook b1 is coming yeah bishop g4 a desperado move again <laughs> so rook b1 check and queen a3 is going to be checkmate yeah, black cannot stop this coming mate with his elbow. Queen a3 checkmate. <laughs> so you see you guys, that's why I encourage you to watch my tutorial videos. Because I do cover all these things you guys. And I'm sure if my opponent watched my yesterday's video, he was going to be well prepared in the opening stage. But I could tell that his opening was not okay. Which is why I decided to take advantage of his lack of knowledge. Alright, let me do a quick analysis and just show you what I was expecting to see on the board rather than what my opponent played. So the game started with pawn to e4 and e5 was played then pawn to a4 the king's gambit. Black took and then I played knight to f3. I was expecting black to play g5 and g4. Let's say after playing bishop c4. So I was expecting to see g4 after which I was just going to 
castle shot here because that's what i covered in my tutorial video completely sacrificing my knight for a quick attack on the king side for example after knight c3 and let's say black takes my pawn on g2 well i was going to be very happy to sacrifice my second piece bishop takes f7 does check and after king takes i was going to take with my rook like taking on f4 with my rook because that's check and obviously black cannot block this check with his elbow or his toes and if knight f6 for example i was going to play pawn to e5 since the knight is pinned to the king and if king e8 i was going to play queen h5 check i covered this in fact there's a very beautiful mate that occurs in this line after king e7 and queen e5 checkmate isn't this beautiful you guys just look at this with your own eyeballs i mean this is what i talked about in my yesterday's tutorial which is why you should watch that video you guys and i hope you liked this video if the bird opening is somewhat considered to be dubious because it exposes your king so early in the opening stage sacrificing the king's safety but that's our main idea d5 is the top played move I recommend you go pawn to e4 which introduces a whole new gambit you guys called the williams gambit so black always takes then you go bishop c4 right away and they play knight f6 and instead of playing knight c3 you surprise your opponent with the move pawn to d4 after which you can see they always take with ampersand e takes d3 and then what i like doing in this position is to pre-move knight e2 play this as fast as you can cause once again you can see the top played move is d takes e2 which is a blunder because now you can safely take on f7 you sacrifice your bishop and king takes f7 is the only move after which you win black's queen on d8 however the correct move to be played on move 5 instead of knight e2 is knight c3 to my surprise the top played move once again is d takes c2 which turns out to be a losing mistake because of bishop takes f7 once again maybe the best they can do is to play knight c6 the second most played move but here you can just go knight to f3 giving black one more time to take on c2 you can see that's what they do always because this time their knight is protecting the queen but here you can just go ahead and trade queens you go knight b5 there is no good way for black to defend the c7 pawn they may try rook b8 to save the rook but you can just take that c7 pawn check and retreat your knight back next you are going to cast short life goes on now let's look at some more interesting lines or openings where you can sacrifice your king's safety in order to win fast trap number two in the king's gambit accepted again with white pieces you start with e4 the black plays e5 then right away you go pawn to f4 they mostly take on f4 and then you go knight to f3 you can see the top played move is g5 and here i recommend to go with bishop c4 you want to cast a shot but you can see the top played move once again is g4 so i'm only interested in showing you the top played moves after this i just recommend to cast a shot once again gambling your king's safety and after pawn takes don't even take back with the queen just go knight c3 allowing black to expose your king even more because there's something you are up to bishop takes f7 check if king takes f7 you simply take on f4 with your rook there's even a funny mate which can happen right here after king e8 where you can go queen at 5 check and after king e7 you met black in style like this so hopefully they don't play king e8 in this position they might play knight to f6 the top played move but here you can just go e5 the knight is pinned to the king so you are assured of winning back your piece right in this position queen h5 is check so they'll play king f8 after which you take back and after bishop takes f6 you go knight d5 and here white is clearly winning you're about to equalize material and checkmate black so once again you can see this is what i meant by sacrificing your king's safety for a quick checkmate or simply exposing your king side deliberately to win fast in this video i'm not just covering the king's gambit traps but i'm also going to feature some of the interesting traps that may arise from certain positions that are similar to the king's gambit dubious gambit number two it doesn't even have a name but this arises from the dutch defense where black plays a5 after default so what you do is you sacrifice your e pawn yeah one might argue this is the staunton gambit but we have another idea after pawn takes you sacrifice your f pawn which most of your opponents will take by the way that's the top played move in the leeches database this is known as the staunton gambit accepted and the main theory is to take back stockfish likes this you can tell from the evil bar the game is almost equal but here is where you go crazy instead of taking back you continue with my 
elbow gambit and play pawn to c3. Yes, allowing black to take on g2. Who am I? Now, Stockfish gives black a negative 1.2, which means white has some chances to get back to the game if and only if bishop takes g2 is played. But you know how crazy Casper is. Rather than taking back, the move I recommend is you save your bishop because your rook sucks. <laughs> And what this does, especially in Bullet and Blizz, it creates an impression as if you blundered your rook, which most of your opponents are going to take and promote into a donkey if they want. But hey, this is when you can easily go queen h5 check and after g6, you mate into like this. Now see, after f takes g2 and bishop d3, you will see that most of your advanced opponents are more likely not going to take, because this is very easy to see. And so the move that they may try here is pawn to g6, just stopping you from going queen h5. But now it is time for you to grab this pawn, cause the threat is real. So the move I highly recommend is queen c2. That's how you get back this pawn and you will be fine. The point is, if black goes ahead and take the rook just like before, Still, there's a mate in two like this. Right, let's go a step further. What if they play pawn to g6 and after you go queen c2, they don't take? Another move that you will see them playing is knight f6, by the way, but you still have a mate in two even after that. So at this point, you will see them making moves like pawn to d5, trying to create a breather. And finally, this is when you can take on g2. And here you just gave up two pawns, by the way. Yet, Stockfish doesn't think you are losing because you have so many open lines and you are going to develop your minor pieces and castle long, then start attacking on the side of the board where there are few pawns. Game number five. This was a blitz match that I played against a 2190 rated opponent. I started with e4, then e5 by black, then immediately I played pawn to f4 because I just wanted to try out the king's gambit traps that I covered in the video that has popped up in the card above. You can watch that video. Very interesting one. My opponent took on f4 by the way. And then I played knight to f3. Again, my opponent played the top played move, pawn to g5, but I just played bishop c4 allowing him to go pawn to g4. By the way, the whole idea of pawn to g4 was to chase my knight away from the f3 square and then black would have played queen h4. This is what he wanted to play, but I just castled short, giving up my knight. Very brilliant move. My opponent took and I was like, ah, oh, no, my knight. But I didn't take back on f3 anyways. I played knight c3, allowing black to take the second pawn. Hmm. Now see how I mated my opponent in just 10 moves. I sacrificed my bishop on f7 with check. And after king takes, I took on f4 with my rook check. And then my opponent played king e8, which was a very terrible blunder because I had queen h5 check, which I played, and after king e7, this is how I met it, my opponent, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, some of you may be like, after rook takes f4 check, why didn't my opponent play knight to f6? Well, that was a move, but I could have played pawn to e5. And let's say after bishop g7, I was going to play queen h5 check. And after king f8, let's say I was going to take black's knight and... Let's say bishop takes. I covered this move in my King's Gambit video. So go and check it out after watching this video. And that's all for today, you guys. Let me know which episode you liked the most in the comment section down below. And if at all you would love to see more of these kinds of content where I compile my favorite videos in one collection, of course, to make it easier for you guys, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.